Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Pitch Us. My name is Tim Cooley, the author of the Pitch Deck book. Super excited to have Anthony here. Anthony, I've, I've known each other for a really long time. Um, so, Anthony, please go ahead, share your screen and pitch us. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, there's going to be a million of them here. You're good. <clears throat> okay, we, we can see my screen? Yep. Awesome. So with Sleep Easy technology, we're trying to make sleep uh, more convenient for those that have supplemental oxygen. And after my time at the University of Utah, I had the pleasure of being this family's neighbor. And this, this little boy, he... Um, is the inspiration for this company and the product that we developed, this first product, um, because he suffers from wearing supplemental oxygen while he sleeps. And supplemental oxygen, just when someone has a concentrator uh, or a tank, and then they usually use either a mask or a nasal cannula. And what I found with this little boy is this little boy refuses to wear his oxygen therapy. And you can imagine, you know, he's just like every other little boy likes going to the park, playing with his dog. But the thing he doesn't do very well is sleep through the night because he gets PTSD from being in the hospital that it, he just struggles with his oxygen therapy. And so this family is like, well, there's no other option out there. And with my background in biomedical engineering, I was like, there has to be some way we can get this little boy oxygen without him realizing that he's receiving his therapy. And this little boy is not the only one with this issue. There's 1.5 million people in the U.S. that have home oxygen therapy. And the the real problem with, with this therapy is there's an over 40% non-compliance rate. So people just don't use their oxygen therapy. And most of that comes down to the same reason this little boy won't wear it, which is comfort. They'll get nosebleeds. The tube rubs them. They toss and turn. That tube gets wrapped around their head. They end up taking it off due to frustration. So you can imagine if you're not compliant with your therapy, over time, that just leads to um, <clears throat> your medical issues compounding to people so that people get hypertension, stroke, and depression. So what we ended up doing is we built this little boy an oxygen therapy pillow. And if you fast forward two and a half years, this is the version of the product we developed, which retrofits to anyone's standard pillow size. So you can imagine you know, how you sleep. A lot of these individuals will stack pillows like thicker or thinner pillows. So instead of us being a company that has 13 different SKUs to accommodate everybody, we can retrofit to anyone's standard pillow size so that they can get their therapy without having to put tubes up their nose. And, you know, we've, we've tested this with a number of different people and we've, we're, we've developed the Oxilo system is what we've, what we've branded the product, which is the nowhere wireless oxygen therapy for individuals that need therapy the, with their, with, with their sleep. And, you know, these are some, some quotes from some of the people that have used it. Um, we, we had one guy that said he got less sleep with his cannula than he does without it. And for, for us, with our product, um, has really changed this, these people's lives because now they no longer have to identify with a product that, that goes up their nose, right? Where there's no other option, we're just looking to be an alternative. So that way you can really empower people to breathe and sleep how they're comfortable. <clears throat> And within, within that, um, just to show you that, you know, our product does meet the standards for, for oxygen therapy while people sleep. Um, this is some FiO2 testing, which just stands for fraction of inspired oxygen. So they have tested what a cannula does in terms of providing the concentration of oxygen to someone while they sleep. And so from one to four liters, you know, the bulk, bulk of your market is about two liters per minute. Um, and we are exactly identical when it comes to the payload of oxygen that we give somebody with our product from one to three liters. And then at four liters, it starts to taper off. We're, we're about 1% less than what someone would get with, with a nasal cannula. And so we've, we've done a number of patients with this, with this, uh, Oxalo system. And within this graph, this is a box and whisker plot. And each one of these plots are a different patient. And what you can see is the goal in terms of why someone's prescribed supplemental oxygen is to keep them above 88% while, while they're at rest, while they're sleeping. And so you can see with this graph, each one of these box uh, and whisker plots is a different person. Um, and even with this array of different people, different diagnosis, different leader flows, we can maintain someone's oxygen levels. So that way they no longer have to worry about having a leash to, to an oxygen concentrator. Uh, in terms of validation data, so there's, there's another way to look at it. You got the same patient here, 
this is this first graph is their nasal cannula. The second graph is is our product. And what you can see here is even with the nasal cannula, this specific individual drops down um, within their given night. And then with our products, it, it's almost identical in terms of where they're being maintained with their, their oxygen level. And from, from this patient, as well as the other patients within this equivalency study, we're 95% confident there's no difference to maintain someone's oxygen levels when it's compared to the nasal cannula to our product within that 88% or above uh, for those that sleep with supplemental oxygen at night. If we're going to look at the market as a whole and who uh, is affected by the oxylo system, um, if you look at markets such as uh, traumatic brain injury, high altitude sickness, our home oxygen therapy, as well as some wellness markets, we have a TAM or a total addressable market of $1.54 billion. And we've segmented that down with our beachhead, which is the, uh, the, the SAM or the segmented addressable market as the 1.5 million people um, plus the 45% of people that struggle with compliance to their therapy. And then we've, we've, we've uh, segmented that down even further to the size of obtainable market. Um, so after five years of acquiring 80,000 customers at our, our $300 price point, and what's included in that is our, our upfront sell the product. And then we have a subscription service that goes with that. So as someone continues to use the product, we can maintain the cleanliness. So that way over a long period of time, we're not blowing bacteria in their face uh, just to ensure that you know these, these people aren't actually harming themselves using our product. And we've got, yeah, and sorry, I guess I missed the, the SOM price on that, but the SOM is, is $30 million from you know these metrics that we've we've set into our model. Um, and then <clears throat> we've we've set within within the market, uh, there we kind of have a two-phase approach. And, and there's been a number of other companies that have done direct consumer marketing within the home oxygen therapy. And so we're, we're modeling that within our products. So we're going to do an elasticity model first and then move into a B2B phase two, which is a conventional sales model through DME companies, as well as to institutions. And right now, this is what it looks like in terms of our elasticity model. Um, from the upfront sale, we'll be a B testing different price points from $125 to $300. And, and the reason we price it at this, this point is if you look at other adjacent markets that are close to it, uh, if you're doing a cash sale in those markets, these are the prices that people are paying for consumables as well as upfront sales of, um, you know, if you look at your CPAP market, not, not that we actually address CPAPs, right? We are just create the oxygen rich environment. So as someone breathes, they can maintain a higher level of their therapy. Um, but if you look at that adjacent market, you can, you can see what in the eyes of the consumer, what they'd be willing to pay out of pocket in order to get better night's sleep and, and, and better therapy options. Um, so we, we're starting with this direct consumer, uh, and we'll get in some, some different marketing metrics that we've, we've done. And, um, once, once we know what that, that channel looks like, then we'll move into the B2B or the institutional side. Uh, we also are working with the COPD Foundation as one of our partners, uh, which they have over 50,000 active monthly users on, on their network that, of people that use uh, oxygen therapy. Um, so into, into some of those metrics, so we did do a product ambassador program at the end of the summer. And even with social media or, or Facebook, we were driving people with a very bare bones ad. And with that, we were getting 50, 56 cents per lead. Um, and so I think the things that we learn from doing this type of marketing is we can favorably attract these people. And what we ended up doing is uh, we went through this funnel that, that we developed. Um, <clears throat> but what you can see is, is these numbers up here show you what we're getting in terms of getting in front of people and what it costs us and what the market trends look like um, from, you know, doing the same process. And so for us, it's just exciting because now we know we can target these people uh, and get in front of them as well as they reach out because, you know, home oxygen therapy is, is, you know, people that have it, they are watching TV or they sit in their recliner and are on Facebook. So for us, it's, it's beneficial that we can target these people effectively and now we're just excited because this last week uh, we were able to get our first production run. Now we're revamping the website. So it's turning into we can really see all these pieces coming together. So that way we can can move the business and, and help people sleep better at night. 
And the reason they're going to sleep better is, is it all comes down to comfort, right? So you, the, the two other metrics, you have your cannula, your oxygen mask, but with us, we just provide com comfortable oxygen therapy that people continue to use it in order to sleep better and re really to return to how they used to sleep because they don't have to fight a tube while they sleep uh, during the night. You know, in terms of the, the, the oxylo system, this is a class one medical device, which means we self-appoint and then we file a letter to file with the FDA. Uh, and then we are uh, pay the registration fee and the, the company and the product can be registered. Um, so there's no actual approval process with our product because the prescription's on the auction itself, not the delivery method. Mm -hmm. um, from an IP standpoint, our parent patent, which is that original pillow that I built for my neighbor boy, uh, that was issued in May of 22. And then we have a handful of patents that cover the changes we made from that original product to the retrofitting version to anyone's standard pillow size, as well as we have a next gen version um, uh, that, that we'll get to at the end of this, this slide slide deck. And we're, we're the team to make it happen. So me and my brother have been the ones that have been working on it full time uh, for the last, last two and a half years. Um, we've got a handful of advisors and team members, uh, one of which is Larry Mastrovich, who has over 30 years experience in this respiratory market. Uh, we just brought on Aaron Barr that he has a uh, direct consumer uh, experience, worked for Inogen, which is another company that does direct consumer with home oxygen therapy products. And then we have Dr. Lewis Klein, who is a pulmonary pulmonology and sleep doc for the last 30 plus years. Uh, and then we have Ben Hogan out of Notre Dame um, University that has been helping us as, as an advisor, uh, I mean, a board member. And then we have uh, Spencer Walker out of, out of Utah, Salt Lake City, uh, who has been helping us on our strategy with the regulatory side. So currently, you know, we're, we're looking to raise 500K uh, and most of that's going to go towards our, our sales side. So testing unit economics, the channel. Um, as well as we have a couple of molds that are getting made. Uh, the nice thing about our product is because um, we've already made our injection molding parts, um, foam foam molding or foam or solution casting. Uh, the molds are a lot cheaper, um, as well as we have some other team members that we bring it on. Uh, and then out of that, when we have our elasticity model, we channel testing uh, the different uh, on on the Facebook side as well as the website. Uh, to validate our, our unit economics. Uh, we have met with a number of other big home oxygen therapy companies, and they have told us you know, how many units, how many customers we have to get for them to be attracted in our venture. So for us, we know what our goal is and what the milestones are. And so for us, it's now we're just coming down to ex execute and having having the dollars to, to, all, to get there. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I don't know if you want me to go through the financials um, okay. and then, you know, what's coming next. Well, we have what one thing, one of the things we learned is people that use home oxygen therapy, or you think about the older demographic, they may not sleep in a bed at all or use a pillow. So for us, uh, and, and the other question we always get is if you're sleeping on your back, what if, are you getting the same oxygen? And the answer is no. And so what we developed is a neck pillow version that even if you're sleeping on your back or you sleep in a recliner, uh, even if you're a side sleeper, uh, this could be a different version of our product that does the same thing where it creates an oxygen rich environment to maintain your, your levels at night. Cool. Cool. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, well, first of all, thanks for presenting. This is really interesting. Um, and it's kind of been cool to see the evolution of this since we talked a long time ago, actually, probably about two years ago. Um, so um, thanks for presenting. Um, a couple of things I just want to go over, things that I really liked. Um, I think your traction for the product itself and where you guys are at is pretty impressive. Um, the, that um, animated GIF for what the, the, the next version of the product is going to look like is really cool. Um, I think it's an animated GIF, right? Yeah. The, I mean, the animated GIF... So even the anime gifts us a little behind in terms of, um, so we no longer have the elastic strap. We ship oh. them the pillowcase has Velcro on it. And then those blocks just come down on top of oh, it. Cool. So it's, it's, you know, the same product except for it's just, there's no more elastic band. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'll say is for people who are watching, um, 
animated GIFs are a really nice way of embedding video into your thing. So I don't recommend video at all, but if you're going to do it, animated GIFs are a good way to go. Um, so I just wanted to call that out from a, <laughs> a pitch presentation point of view. Um, and the reason for that is usually videos don't really work. Um, especially if your, your internet's funky or it didn't embed properly, but GIFs almost always work properly and they're really short. So that's good. Um, I will say, I love the data that you presented on the product working. Um, I think I can help you organize that a little bit better. Okay. Um, uh, in that goes in, should st all stick in part of your traction. Um, and, and I'll help you reorganize some things. But um, traction is really, really good as far as like the data is concerned. So we'll get all traction elements in one location. Um, and I love the experiment that you ran for the B2B or the um, direct to consumer side of this market. Um, you know, it, it is early numbers and that's great. Um, but I do think it's nice that you just like kind of showed us like you tried something, you know, you can convert something when um, we don't know what our final numbers will look like. But you're like, it kind of, the math starting to math, even though we're not selling a product yet. And I absolutely love that. So great so job. The, 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 other, the other slide that I haven't put in here is, um, you know, hot off the press. The last last two weeks, we have been running Facebook ads to drive people to convert on our website. Um, yep. And the data that's coming in is so we're only spending like $10 a day. Uh, and so from this campaign, uh, we, we got in front of, I want to say it was 2,000 people in terms of them seeing our, our ad. Yeah. And from that, we had 400 that went to our website and we had like 35 add to cart. Um, there are some other issues on the funnel where they're falling off on the website side of things, but we're fixing that. I've got a designer agency that's helping us redo those things. Yeah. Um, so even if 10% of those people that added cart ended up buy buying, that still puts us in a, a positive ROI on when it comes to, you know, ad spend and you know, using yeah. the channel specifically. No, that's amazing. Congrats on all that. That's cool. Um, so the biggest thing that I would say now with the deck and as you guys go out and raise capital, I would spend the money on Fiverr to make this thing look better. Um, it, it, you're, you're at the place. I think the content's okay. I'll help you with that. But like get something visual that really represents what the brand is um, and then use that throughout. We've got like, you know, 20 different fonts in here. We've got, we could create our own visual. It looks the same way oh as this. Um, but I think it's, it's good time now to like, just let someone on Fiverr help you guys out visually. Um, yeah. and that's really cheap, right? Yeah, no, um, I, I agree. Okay. So let's go back to the very beginning. Okay. Um, so let's go onto the problem slide. Okay. So I would break this up maybe into three different slides. I would show the original story with this young man and then like, what his problem was, um, then not only his problem, this because this is what got you started. Then right. I would say, now here's the problem with the industry as a whole, which is like this middle section, right? You've got nasal cannulas, you've got oxygen masks, and this is the that middle, like, I'm going to call it column. It's not really a column, but like those bullet points. Yeah. All could be one slide in itself. And that gives you a lot of space in the, in the slide to get really detailed. Then the third thing that I would do is show the effects. And then I would come in with this data point up here, this 1.5 million to say, so this little boy had this problem. Here's a problem with the current products. And here's the result. 1.5 million people have to do this. And if they don't get this, you know, 40% are non-compliant. And this is the result of those. So I think breaking up your problem slide into three will not only help you tell the story better, but like, I didn't know where to follow you when you were speaking. Like you started talking about the boy, which is in the upper right. And I'm like reading this and I'm like, where are we? And you yeah. know what I mean? And then you went down to the pictures below and I'm like, where are we still? And then it, and I just wasn't sure where we were going. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then now let's go into the, the solution. So I would have liked to have seen the progression of the product. Like I've seen the old one personally, you know? So I was like, so we built a prototype. We got some really good data points on that. We've iterated and here's the newest version. Like that's a really good way to say we, we've made movement. It's kind of like a traction slide, but in a solution. And then you can go into like, like the features of this, like it doesn't, you know, make sure you're iterating. Like it's no contact, no nothing. It just attaches, like show me the newest product if there's a newer version. Um, 
but yeah, like kind of walk me through the, the development of that. And then I would go into the traction elements that you have. So all those data points. So like, we know it works. We've run three studies. Let me show you the results of these studies, you know, and then I would say, pull out those studies, like go to your, um, the studies themselves. Yeah. So this one right here. Yeah. Go back or go back one. Okay. So finding what's, so I don't know the number of patients this was. So this, this is actually bench top da testing data. Oh, okay, so there's, cool. there's no, no patients on this one. Okay. Yeah. So I would call some things out and get do them with colors like bench top test. We're just, we're good enough. And only a one, and I would call it this 1%. And you would say that, and then I would say statistically not significant, right? Like pull those out in colored words so that I can follow along with whatever it is you're saying. Um, and I think that would be fine. And then go to the next slide. Yeah, so same with here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. You have 11 patients. Um, I would call out those details. So 11 patients, we're still good. You know, I'm, that's not the right thing to say, but like make it look more of like an advertisement than a, uh, like a- The science -y data. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then go to the next slide. Yeah, same thing with this, right? So really, this is a beautiful slide. You can clearly see the difference or the, really the same, similar. Um, put a little red arrow like this and it, like that cannula part should be huge. Like I can't read that. Um, so like, you're like, this is with the cannula, this is us. We outperformed them and the person even was below. Right. So again, think more marketing than science on these slides. Okay. All right. Now go to the next slide. Okay, cool. Um, I think in this case, go, cause you are going to be to B, I mean, direct to consumer. Yeah. Um, go right into what it costs. Like you've already shown me the solution, get to the numbers, right? So you went to market first. I think it's more beneficial to go to here. Business yep. first. Yep. So just get the numbers, make these bigger. So they're easier to see. Again, I think having somebody with design experience can help you pull those things out. And then I would do a financial projection slide after this one. Um, yours is at the very, very bottom, but we want to keep all the numbers in one location. Okay. So go this, here's what our projections look like over time. And then go to your TAM. You spent a lot of time explaining the TAM. Um, um I don't yeah. think you needed to do that. Okay. Uh, if it's really clear. So you could say, look, our total addressable market is these three areas, but we're hyper-focused. So you can kind of skip the middle one and go to your SOM and say, here's where we're at over the next five years. Here's who we're really going after with a direct to consumer market. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it's just, short, just shortening this one and getting it really, really succinct. I think that'll be great. Okay. Um, but with that said, you've got all the elements. So I'm just trying to help you like organize a little better. No, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And then I would go into traction. Um, or, I mean, you can do competitive uh, analysis here. Okay. Um, yeah, this guy should come next. Cause again, you've talked about the market as a whole now stay with the market and you've kind of already mentioned this in the beginning. So you're just reminding people, um, and then you go into your traction. And so I would say, I, just remind people. So again, we did a prototype. We're on version three. Now, uh, we've run these ads and here's, and put this all in one slide. We've run a couple ads. Here's our customer acquisition costs. Um, and so we do think we'd be profitable if, even if we just stuck with this, you know, but pulling these things out again, think marketing, like think about like a, what the way a coach would sell you on TikTok, like take my coaching course, you know, um, I think about it like that for here because it's really compelling numbers. Um, and if somebody was in this space and was like, oh shoot, you guys have good margins you're already converting. We know these are going to drop or get more expensive over time, but even if they three X did still be fine. Right. Right. Um, so that's kind of what you're trying to say. And then I would also pull in like those, those numbers that you have currently with that Facebook uh, thing that you said. Right. And you and can go, go to your next slide. You could use this like little graphic here. Um, and pull this out and make it just way less words like Facebook ads, $10 a day, 8% conversion, blah, blah, blah. And we would have made $3,000 on that campaign. Right. 
again, I just made all that up, but you can just see like, it's really clean and just like it goes sideways so I can follow along. Yeah. This has me going down, then sideways, and then I have to read the graph. There's just a lot um, going on there. All right, next slide. Okay, yep. Okay. So this needs to go in your traction element or the stay in this traction area. The thing you said was, um, uh, hold on one sec. Oh, the delivery system. You said it, but it's not on this. Oh, the, the prescriptions on the oxygen and not the mm -hmm. delivery. Yeah. So I would pull this out uh, somewhere in the deck. Like, like we don't, this is just a delivery mechanism. Therefore, here's what we get. And we're on this path already. We've got this issued. We're right here. So um, I think adding that here and again, calling it out with different colors. So it's very clear that that's why you guys can go direct to consumer. Um, okay. It's really important. All right, go to the next one. Uh, this slide's just a little cluttered. I think having some help from someone will help make this look better. You don't necessarily need the board members and advisors. And if you did, you could make them way smaller. So it gives you more space for your team. Okay. If you'd like to. All right, go to the next slide. Okay, cool. Um, again, I just think cleaning this up, this is awesome. Um, make sure you end on this slide. I know we went to a couple other ones. If you want to talk about that secondary product, I would do it before this slide. So it's like, hey, we've got a really strong team that's going to execute. Um, and we're also looking at some future products. Here's kind of an example of what that would look like. But we're hyper-focused right now on this first product, and we're looking to raise half a million dollars. Cool. You see what I'm saying? You don't yeah. really even need it. Um, you could keep it in the appendix. Um, if someone's like, so, hey, so what's next? You're, are you a one product thing or whatever? Um, you're like, actually, and then you could bring up that slide. Okay. Uh, cause again, you're right now you're raising half a million. Cause what you don't want to have happen is someone say like, dude, you're, you're doing too many things. Right. Uh, half a million is not going to get you there. So that's what you want to avoid. Make sense. Yeah. Cool. cool. Um, yeah. So with that, I, I'll say you, the, the elements are here. I think the highest level is visually let's clean it up and then just kind of organize those things so that when you're talking about like problem, it's really easy to understand solution. It's really easy, but you can make it even easier. Right. Um, well, I feel like with anything medical, it's like, if you can make it even more simple that just, you know, sometimes medical just goes over people's heads. Yep. And you did a great job with that, right? You only used a couple of medical terms, which is fine. Um, whereas some people will be like my polymer, polymer ligase 983. And you're like, I don't know what that is like at all. Yeah. <laughs> and then they like their eyes go like, you know, <laughs> so anyways, um, any questions for me? No, I think you've given me my homework. Um, yeah. so I will, uh, find someone on Fiverr and we'll, <laughs> we'll put together a more aesthetically pleasing, pleasing deck with, uh, you know, all of our, our our data traction and reorganize it so i uh, perfect appreciate the feedback yeah absolutely anthony thanks again um like i said i've known you for a while and this is awesome to see the progress you've made on this product so congratulations and uh if you guys are out there needing help we i love doing this, this is free just apply pitch us.io um check out the book the pitch deck book and then we'll see you all next time